The future of digital asset mining calls for top technical talent. Enhance your ASIC education with Foundry's hands-on courses. Led by veteran industry instructors, Foundry's three-day mining intensive and five-day mining technician academy programs cover a range of topics, from identifying issues and troubleshooting common hardware failures to coursework covering Bitcoin's global impact. Open to enthusiasts and professionals alike, visit www.foundryacademy.com to learn more and sign up for the course that's right for you. Welcome back to The Mining Pod, joined again by Matt Kimmel of CoinShares to go over this week's news roundup. We got three hot stories for you this week. All eyes are on Binance, but we have some more mining news for the next 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to start off with Argo Blockchain, then move to B. Riley and Core Scientific, and finish today's discussion with a little info about new firmware updates from Bitmain and MicroBT. Kick it over to you for a headline reading on Argo Blockchain, Matt. Yeah, so kind of Coming off of news from last week, Argo had kind of a leak uh, email come out that they may be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Um, the follow on news from that is that their shares kind of plundered, fell significantly. They had been sort of delisted from the London Stock Exchange and then relisted. That's kind of the story. I'm going to send it back over to you for your take. Yeah, no, this whole thing was a bummer definitely for Argo. So, just feeling bad for them. This was an accident. They accidentally published that they might file for Chapter 11. I think they're just getting some documents ready and they sent that out to investors and some people screenshotted it. The London Stock Exchange saw it as well. And as policy, they suspended trading for Argo blockchain on uh, the London Stock Exchange. And then Argo also trades on the NASDAQ Global. And so that was suspended as well because of this notice. And then the following Monday, they issued a notice saying that they're trying to be relisted because the chapter 11 notice they, that had been circulating was incorrect and accidentally published. They were later relisted to the London Stock Exchange in the NASDAQ. I believe they're trading down right now, but to be fair, most miners are. I think this whole instance, we just wanted to button up since we talked about last week. There's not a lot of information to pull away from this or action items, honestly. Just one of those instances where you hit publish by accident and then there's repercussions for it. So unless you have any takeaways from it, we can move on to the next story, which is B. Riley, a huge creditor to Core Scientific, issuing a notice saying that they are might be willing to give Core Scientific more money to stay up on their feet. I'll hand it over to you, Matt. Yeah, I'll just one last bit on the last story. I think just a little bit more painful because everyone kind of knows that the challenging conditions of the mining space. It just kind of makes a little this PR mistake a little bit worse. Um, but yeah, some happy news for Core Scientific, right? Getting, let's see, offer 72 million potential financing package from B. Riley. So B. Riley's confidence kind of stays with Core Scientific despite them having some challenges that kind of all know about. Um, what do you think about the story? Yeah, no, it's certainly interesting to see B. Riley walk back into this. They have about $65 million or $75 million rather in credit out to uh, Core Scientific at this point. There's a lot of other lenders out to Core Scientific and B. Riley is looking to keep that investment afloat, right? If if indeed Core Scientific chooses to go down the bankruptcy path, which they stated might happen back in October, then B. Riley stands to have a large hole in their pocket because they're one of the largest creditors to Core Scientific. And if B. Riley, according to their analysis, sees a pathway for them to be a sustainable operating company with this capital, they stand to gain from injecting more liquidity into Core Scientific. I think there's a lot of questions to be asked here, though. Uh, the analysis from Core is definitely interesting, a little novel. We haven't seen this for other miners, uh, but there's still a lot of outstanding questions, including what happens with the BlockFi loan, what happens from other loans uh, from these creditors to Core Scientific, what happens with uh, the ASIC purchases they've made, are those going to continue to be liquidated, or have they even started liquidating some of these things? What about the facilities that they're building? Uh, all these things are like very costly and capital intensive. So I definitely have more questions, but this seems like a good line for Core Scientific. And I wouldn't be surprised if they choose to pursue this just because it sort of is one of the few olive branches from the market they have at the moment. Yeah, definitely positive sentiment from investors generally. Core Scientific uh, skyrocketed after hours up 94%. 
So definitely uh, things are kind of looking up from from that perspective. All right, last story of the the day here. Firmware update from Bitmain um, for the S19 Pro series. Improved efficiency by uh, just almost 14%. From 29.5 joules per terahash to 25.5. What do you think, Will? Yeah, and it was interesting to see both Bitmain and MicroBT put out new firmware updates. And of course, we have firmware for our third party firmware, I should say, for a lot of ant miners out there from the Brains team, from the Vinesh team, and from others. Uh, but we don't have anything from Bitmain, and we know that these S19s can have improvements with different firmware. So now we have Bitmain walking this out. This improves the efficiency of the machine, meaning you need to pull less energy, which means it's going to be less expensive. But it does underclock your machine, right? So you're getting less Bitcoin out of it. I don't have the numbers in front of me for what the underclocking is, uh, but you're going to get less Terra hashes out of your machine. Um, I think the question here for the Bitmain, Bitmain product itself is if you are pulling less electricity, then yes, you are less expensive to operate your your mine. But most times contracts are set up where you have to use a certain amount of energy and it's to the plug. It's not for the entire site. It's to the plug for each individual miner. So if you start decreasing things by 15%, well, that miner becomes 15% less expensive to operate, but not really because you still have to purchase that electricity. Those contracts are normally set up, so you have to purchase it over a period of time. And I think this could have a lot less impact than people are thinking for the network in general because everyone's going to have to get used to this new standard. It's not going to be like, oh, we can just download this firmware, implement it, and start running with it. No, you actually have to go into the energy contracts itself and change things. For the MicroBT update, I did not see a lot of things in there. Honestly, the only thing I really saw was a meme circulating around talking about how it made MicroBT machines a little easier to use. Uh, not a lot of info on underclocking, overclocking, those sort of things. Of course, the, the meme with brains is when MicroBT uh, and MicroBT itself has not updated its firmware in order to overclock, to my understanding. Throw it back over to you, Matt. Yeah, I feel like this story is kind of neat because it's like the official firmware update for the machines from the manufacturers. It's kind of like a, a top-down uh, software thing that you could do with your machines. Because um, typically, it seems like it's from the the pool side, or just you know someone has high technical skill and does it themselves for their machines. Um, so you know maybe. I guess interesting point that you brought up to me was that it could uh, help you keep your warranty on the machines uh, if something went, you know, particularly wrong with them and there was um, sort of a hardware glitch of some sort. So, I mean, not I think crazy significant of news, but interesting nonetheless, and could help a miner out there. Certainly. So, yeah, three quick stories to wrap up for the weekend. Not a lot happening in mining circles. I think we're hitting crypto winter, so that how it might be for a little bit which is honestly kind of nice a little refreshing after everything that's happened with ftx and so many other people in crypto we'll call it a wrap there great to see you matt talk to you next week cheers